In Windows 10, a user's app and desktop settings and some elements of their user data are stored in a user profile. User profiles hold the most user configurable settings and data in Windows 10. Each user that signs into Windows 10 computer is associated with a file level profile folder, which is stored in the C colon backslash users subfolder. A user profile is automatically created and configured for each user that signs in to a Windows 10 computer. There are three main profile types in Windows 10. Local profiles, roaming profiles, and mandatory profiles. The local profile is defined by a combination of the contents of the folders within a user profile, such as app data, documents, local settings, and so on, and the ntuser.dat registry file. When a user signs out, the HKEY current user registry hive is saved to ntuser.dat and then applied to the Windows 10 environment when the user next signs in. You can see here the typical folders and the ntuser.dat file that make up a local user profile. Because users don't always sit at the same computer in an organization, roaming profiles exist. To use roaming profiles, your environment must satisfy the following requirements. The Windows 10 computer must be a member of an ADDS domain. The user that signs in must have a user account object created in that domain. The user account must have the profile path attribute set to a network location to which the user has at least read and write permissions. This is configured through the properties of the user account. Open the user account properties through a tool such as Active Directory Users and Computers and on the Profile tab you can configure the profile path. When a user signs out, their local profile is copied to this central path. When a user signs in, the contents of this profile path are copied to the local profile folder on the computer that they're now sitting at, and their desktop and app environment is built. In some situations, you may want to make a read-only or mandatory profile for a user. Mandatory profiles are a special type of roaming profile. They're copied to a network location in the same way as a regular roaming profile. They're always read-only, which means a mandatory profile cannot be altered by the user. They're commonly used to provide an enforced desktop environment with settings for users who perform a specific or specialised task and are set when he or she is signed in to a Windows computer. You create a mandatory profile simply by renaming the ntuser.dat file in the roaming profile folder to ntuser.man. You can configure network locations for specific folders within a user profile. Open File Explorer and expand this PC. On any of the folders except Local Disk, right-click the folder and then click Properties. In the Folder Properties dialog box, click the Location tab and then change the location, as shown here. So, in this instance, this is the Documents folder, and we're moving the Documents folder, or we have the option to move the Documents folder by clicking the Move button and specifying an alternative location. User state consists of the following settings. User settings, user registry, application data, user data, and when you want to migrate these settings, you can use the user state migration tool. This helps with both wipe and load and side-by-side -side migrations. The user state migration tool is part of the Windows ADK. You perform the user state migration in two sequential steps. First, you capture settings and data with scan state, then you restore settings and data with load state. You can choose what to capture by configuring the MIG app XML, MIG docs XML, and MIG user XML files. You can also create additional custom XML files. It's important to note the following are not migrated with USMT. Local printers, hardware settings, device drivers, passwords, customize icons, shared folder permissions, files and settings if different languages are installed. You must perform the following high-level steps to use USMT to migrate user state. First of all, install the Windows ADK on a technician computer. Use the scanState.exe command to generate config.xml. Modify config.xml, migapp.xml, migdocs.xml and miguser.xml to your requirements. Copy the USMT files to a network share or removable drive. Create a folder on a network share or removable drive that can be used as a migration store. 
on the source computers, run the scan state command from the network share or removable drive to collect files and settings. Install Windows 10 on the destination computers that will be part of the migration. And then on these destination computers, run the load state command from the network drive or removable drive to apply the files and settings in the migration store. Let's see that in a demonstration right now. So I'm on the client computer CL1. Let's just verify that. If I right click this PC in File Explorer, choose the properties. You can see CL1 and it's a member of the Pearson.com domain. So the first thing I'm going to do is map a network drive. I'm going to map drive U to the server, it's called DC1, and to a location where I've stored the user state migration tools. So that I've got something to migrate, I'm also going to create a desktop shortcut for a text file. And if I double click that, I'll enter some content. Save the file. So uh, the next thing to do is open up a command prompt. I'll run this as administrator. I'm going to change to drive letter U, which was the drive I mapped to the USMT program files. I'll just verify they're there. They are. And then I'm going to run the scan state program and specify DC1 as the target server, MIG store as the target share, CL1 as a subfolder, and then I'm going to use the XML configuration files mentioned here to migrate the appropriate data and settings. This is just an example command. The migration process will start and that'll take a, a few minutes depending on the quantity of data and settings to migrate. So you can see that it's discovered two user accounts and a, and a computer account and it's migrated the user account or the two user accounts over now and it's just working on migrating the computer settings. Okay so that migration is complete. Let's just take a look on the server computer and if I open up File Explorer and navigate to the store you can see that there's a CL1 folder here and a subfolder called USMT and that's the migrated content file there. The next step is to migrate the content to the new computer. Okay to complete the process we need to switch to the second client. This is another computer running Windows. I've signed in again as the administrator from the Pearson domain. The first thing I'm going to do is map a network drive as I did before. I'll use the same drive letter U and those are the user state migration tools themselves. I now need to open up a command prompt. Again I'll run that as administrator. So uh, one of the things you'll notice is that there's no uh, desktop shortcut for that file. So in the command prompt I'll change to drive letter U and I'll just verify the program files are there. They are. And I will run the load state command. This time um, I'm specifying the same folder location, so the same server, the same shared folder and the, the same subfolder and specifying the configuration files and then the required security information to open up the migration store. And the migration process begins. It's discovering the users and then it will discover the computer and then start to migrate those elements across to this computer. There's not much data to migrate for each of these user accounts so it shouldn't take too long. And you can see already that the file that we created, the shortcut, has appeared on the desktop already. So there we go, that process is now complete. End demonstration, you saw how to migrate user state using the USMT tool.